Okay, sorry about that. So today, uh, David Marcos is going to tell us about how to simulate many body physics and dynamical gauge theories of superconducting qubits. And, yes, go ahead. Okay, so thank you for the organizers for having invited me here uh, to very, this very nice conference in Boston. So today I will uh, tell you a little bit about our recent uh, ideas on quantum simulation in Peter Scholler's group, uh, both uh, in the context of many body physics <coughs> as well as in the context of uh, dynamical uh, gauge field theories. So as we have learned in this conference, uh, Implementing a quantum simulator is easier than implementing a quantum computer. <clears throat> uh, since already uh, for uh, n on the order of 40 or 50 uh, qubits, one can uh, simulate dynamics that uh, one cannot actually simulate with a classical computer. And uh, most interestingly uh, is that... Uh, how do you come up with that number? So it's basically a question of uh, memory available for a classical computer. So if you exponentiate 2 to the 50, you already come up with uh, that number. And um, what is also very interesting is that um, for the dynamics, this number uh, is decreased since uh, the time that takes to run the simulation, it also grows exponentially. And therefore, quantum simulation uh, becomes extremely interesting in the context of non-equilibrium problems, um, where I believe that there are many open questions to uh, uh, to answer yet. And some uh, proposals for quantum simulators include uh, cold gases, optical lattices, trapped ions, uh, quantum dots, superconducting qubits, or photonic devices. And I encourage to have a look at the recent uh, special issue in, na in Nature Physics, appeared uh, in uh, April, about quantum simulators. So in this talk I will tell you about two part particular examples of quantum simulators. The first one, uh, about how to uh, implement uh, a photonic uh, cavity array that actually simulates quasi-thermal properties of many body systems. The second example I would like to tell you about is about how to simulate uh, lattice gauge field theories with uh, photons. So let me come to the first part, quantum simulation of non-equilibrium many body physics with superconducting qubits. So the general um, scenario that I, I will uh, be considering consists of an array of coupled cavities, which can be optical or uh, uh, microwave cavities, in which photons can uh, hop from side to side. And therefore, the Hamiltonian is simply described by a, a free cavity part plus a, a hopping part. And also, it has been shown uh, in the late uh, uh, 90s by Imamoglu and co-workers that, uh, that by introducing a nonlinear uh, medium inside the cavity, such as uh, an atomic system, effective photon photon interactions can be engineered in these systems, and therefore, this kind of system is well described by the uh, Bose Haber Hamiltonian. And indeed, uh, it has been shown um, in these papers here that uh, a superfluid mode insulator transition is achieved in these systems. So experimentally, um, one could achieve this type of uh, Hamiltonian using both uh, photonic crystal structures or uh, superconducting uh, cavity resonators coupled uh, in a lattice structure. And importantly, in these systems, uh, photons can decay. And therefore, in this uh, work, I would like to consider the most general scenario in which uh, photons can actually leak out of uh, its cavity. And notice that in this situation, uh, the steady state of the problem will be eventually the vacuum state and therefore I, I will choose also to drive the cavities such that um, uh, I always uh, have photons inside my system. So this uh, scenario will be well described by a quantum master equation of this form in which I have the cavity dynamics, the driving part, then the incoherent uh, decay of photons outside of these cavities and in addition, in this work, I would like to consider an additional uh, dissipative mechanism which takes this uh, sort of complicated form, which is a quasi-local uh, form, which what it does is to scatter photons from the anti-symmetric uh, superposition between neighboring uh, sides into the symmetric superposition. So, so what is the T1 of photon here? I mean, what is the decay rate? That, that will depend on your syst specific system. So. Uh, for example, for uh, uh, microwave cavities, you have 
hundred microseconds or something. Okay. A bit of a little bit less. Yeah. So in this uh, in these systems, uh, I will consider this uh, engineered dissipation and as well as the uh, reverse process, and this will allow me uh, to study thermalization properties in the system. And it's, uh, it has been shown that this Liouville here. Uh, has a steady state which corresponds precisely to, the, to a bose einstein condensate of photons. So I will show how to engineer this type of uh, Liouvillians in the context of circuit QED. So let me first tell you a few words about photon condensation. Uh, so what we know about uh, photons is that um, uh, they are described by the uh, Planck distribution in equilibrium, uh, which has a zero chemical potential and therefore does not predict uh, condensation of photons. To avoid this uh, uh, issue of uh, the fact that the photons do not condense, uh, in the literature, literature it has been considered the interaction of photons with excitons in, uh, in cavities, uh, which actually uh, uh, hybridize to form a, an, uh, to give an effective mass and a spectrum of this form with a gap in which photons are able to condense to a, a zero momentum state. More recently, it has been uh, considered uh, the thermali uh, thermalization and condensation of photons in optical cavities by filling an optical cavity with a medium of dye molecules uh, with which photons can uh, scatter, that is, uh, exchange uh, energy uh, quite fast, and therefore this acts as a, as a reservoir for the photons and provides them an effective chemical potential and therefore allows them to, to condense. So in this, uh, in this work, in contrast, I would like to consider the possibility of achieve condensation in a dissipative way. And what this means is that uh, it will be the Liouvillian that uh, will drive the photons to the steady state, which is a bose einstein condensate. And importantly, this means that uh, the condensation will be independent of their dispersion relation. Even if at uh, zero momentum there is not a minimum, but it can be a maximum, if I engineer dissipation in such a way that photons are scattered into the zero momentum mode, I will achieve eventually condensation in the system. So let me specifically tell you what the uh, system and the consideration here. So the system consists of an array of uh, streamlined resonators uh, mutually coupled through uh, two superconducting qubits. And then this uh, basic plaquette will be repeat, uh, repeated over and over again. So the Hamiltonian for this system, for a, a basic plaquette, consists on the cavity part and the cavity part in which qubits interact with a longitudinal as well as with a transversal coupling. Then I have a, a qubit cavity interaction, and then I decide to drive both uh, the qubits and the cavities. And as I said, I uh, will also consider the, the fact that photons uh, can decay outside of the cavities, as well as the fact that uh, the qubits can uh, decay. So therefore, the dynamics of this system uh, is described by this master equation in which I have the cavity part, qubit part, driving of qubit, driving of cavity, and cavity and qubit decay. And my goal in the, in the next slide is to derive an effective master equation by tracing out the qubit degrees of freedom, uh, to derive an effective master equation for the cavity dynamics only, and to show that this will capture uh, the effective Liouvillian that I want to uh, reproduce and that uh, whose steady state is a bose einstein condensate. So this Liouvillian that I am interested in uh, has this form in which photons are scattered from the anti-symmetric mode into the symmetric mode and therefore this is a fourth uh, order uh, process so I have to derive an effective master equation for the cavity dynamics only by tracing out the qubit degrees of freedom. <coughs> uh, and to do so, I construct an effective Hamiltonian and iterate the equation of motion for the density operator to second order. And therefore, I uh, end up uh, to a, with a fourth order master equation, and I consider up to fourth order rational processes. When I do so, the result that I obtain uh, has this form, in which the cavity density operator contains the cavity dynamics and the effective Hamiltonian that I will uh, comment uh, below. Then I have renormalized cavity decays. Importantly, the process of interest that I was looking after, in which photons are uh, scattered from the antisymmetric mode into the symmetric superposition between neighboring sites, and also the reverse process with a different uh, coefficient. Uh, eventually, this coefficient will precisely define an effective temperature in my system. 
And additionally, I get a, a defacing term of photons of this form. The effective Hamiltonian that I uh, obtain includes both Kerr nonlinearities, so photon photon interactions, as well as an squeezing uh, term. So this effective Hamiltonian is already very interesting, but in this work, I will be focusing uh, just on the physics given uh, by this uh, process of interest, and therefore I will consider a regime in which kappa is much larger than the other energy scales, namely uh, the interactions u and the decay rates uh, gamma uh, of the phasing and uh, cavity decays. And this can be, uh, it can be shown that the, uh, indeed there is a regime in which kappa dominates the dynamics uh, specifically it dominates over the uh, defacing rates which can be uh, neglected and uh, therefore the effective master equation for the uh, cavity dynamics consists of uh, the cavity uh, Hamiltonian, the driving part then renormalized cavity decays uh, for the uh, cavity dynamics only and then the process of interest whose steady state is uh, the Boston constant tendency Omega A is at the driving Robbie frequency? What's Omega A? Omega is just the intensity of the Omega drive. A, the horizontal axis of the plot? Omega A is the driving of the uh, anti-symmetric mode of the cavities. So um, here in this work, I can uh, uh, choose the, the driving to be with a particular phase. And I will choose it to be in the anti-symmetric uh, superposition. And so and A is just a superindex to say that I'm uh, driving um, the anti-symmetric uh, superposition so with a pi phase. Anti-symmetric with respect to every nearest neighbor pair in the in the array, yes. or so. But, um, what it means is that um, excuse me. Uh, here I have uh, uh, omega plus omega minus omega. Oh, oh so it's just one d for by definition. Yeah. It's just one d. You're considering only one d. Yes. Okay, I see. Okay, so what I have shown is that uh, at the end of the day, I end up with an effective master equation of this form, and I will study the dynamics of this uh, quantum master equation. Let me give you a more intuitive understanding of uh, what is happening in our system. Uh, so we have a cavity coupled to uh, these two qubits, which form a four-level system with the ground state, the anti-symmetric superposition, the symmetric uh, superposition, and the excited state. <coughs> and what I have done is nothing but uh, tune, <coughs> uh, tune a laser uh, in such a way that I drive this transition here and then I, I tune the cavity frequency in such a way that I uh, destroy an anti-symmetric uh, photon by exciting uh, the qubit system to the excited state and then I create a symmetric uh, photon uh, by relaxing to this uh, symmetric state and finally I allow the system, uh, the qubit system to relax with the decay gamma. And when I trace over the qubit degrees of freedom, I can see that the effective rate uh, dominating these dynamics is on the uh, order here, which can actually uh, dominate uh, both uh, uh, the unitary dynamics and the uh, dissipative dynamics. And this is the condition that I have to impose uh, for the system to eventually condense into this uh, bose einstein condensate of photons. So and then, so that, oh, go ahead. Right. So the level structure is when you diagonalize the two qubits, basically, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So you have to, okay, so the, the cavities are not in this level structure yet. They are separate. And that delta is just the coupling between the two qubits? The the, this delta is, a, uh, so it's, um, eventually it's the detuning. So I drive, uh, there is a detuning between the cavity frequency and the qubit uh, frequency. But and this is this delta, and I, dis I need this delta to be uh, sort of uh, the largest ener energy scale of the problem to perform adiabatic elimination of the qubit so to trace the, over the... The way you have it drawn there, the energy splitting between A and S, which is the coupling between the qubits, looks also like delta. Is that Precisely. an accident? I choose, or? Uh, eventually I choose delta to be on the order of uh, the qubit-qubit coupling. Oh, but just on the order, it's not... It's it, not exact. It's, okay. Yeah, this okay. is just uh, the problem. Okay. But where is the cavity? It's just a couple of qubits. No, so you have the two qubits, and then the cavities, each of the cavities is uh, coupled to, uh, <coughs> to its neighboring cube. Uh, and which transition? So the, the, the cavities, uh, the cavity modes hybridized in such a way that <coughs> they have a frequency that can, they can mediate this transition here of the four level uh, atom that they have now. So what I do is I drive the system 
I uh, place myself in the symmetric superposition, in the anti-symmetric superposition, then an anti-symmetric uh, photon is destroyed by exciting the qubit system, and then I, um, I uh, create a symmetric uh, photon, and in, in this way you can see that you know you are annihilating uh, photons in the <coughs> anti-symmetric mode and creating uh, them into the symmetric superposition. So no surprisingly, uh, you are driving photons into the symmetric. Then something is coupled to the cavity. Which transition? These two. The blue one. Okay. Okay. So let me give you a simple example, uh, which is the example of two coupled cavities, which uh, actually we can solve um, and, uh, exactly. And the um, uh, equations of motion under a semi-classical uh, approximation, the semi-classical decoupling, uh, give rise to these uh, to two solutions in in the system. The first solution. Uh, is that uh, for uh, the driving intensity smaller than a critical value, uh, the symmetric mode uh, uh, population is zero, and uh, the anti-symmetric mode population grows quadratically. Uh, since here, as I said, I'm driving uh, the asymmetric mode uh, externally, and then when I exceed the critical value of the driving intensity, what happens is that the symmetric mode population saturates at its as it, is it, uh, the anti uh, sorry the anti-symmetric uh, mode population saturates as it is shown in this curve here, and the symmetric mode population starts to grow linearly, and therefore this shows this macroscopic occupation of the uh, symmetric mode uh, of photons. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Can I ask you another question to the previous slide? So why doesn't the cavity couple to the two lower positions? Or is this suppressed by detuning? Detuning. You just uh, choose the detuning. So, that's so, that's so the irreversibility is, is from the qubit decay that, that, that wiggles. Precisely. So you're basically optically, or you're, you're cycling between G Precisely. and S, Precisely. and then you're decaying. Precisely. Okay. okay. You, it's just another way to make a single photon. But you have to sort of you have as I, as he pointed out so you have to engineer it in such a way that you know this so the, red, the red thing is your pods the red arrow, double arrow yes That's your pods yes the pi pods it's whatever continuous drive continuous drive it's continuous drive okay I see so because like so you drive and as a matter of fact you have a, a small component that would go in the other direction and this would uh, by imperfections and this would That's the define an effective temperature yeah. in the system eventually okay. But, but the preferential the preferential direction comes from detuning delta, yes. is that right? Because you're yes. resonant. And I can tune through. my parameters in such a way that I go this direction or the other direction. And this could allow me to sort of uh, engineer thermalization processes. Ah, I see. So, so this is what I mean when I okay. say that I, I want to engineer uh, thermal uh, thermaliza quasi thermalization in the system. Okay, so let me uh, go on. And um, just mentioned that, uh, as I said, this system has an, uh, can be solved exactly, and we have done that. And the uh, exact solution, uh, here plotted in black, agrees well with the mean field approximation. So therefore, we uh, trust this mean field here. And uh, we have also studied <coughs> the case of uh, an array of uh, a couple cavities, so an, an infinite uh, array, again under the semi-classical approximation. So what we do, once again, is to drive cavities asymmetrically. So we drive the Q equal pi mode, and we solve the equations of motion in the momentum space under this semi-classical approximation. And what it, ha uh, what it can be shown is that the solution uh, uh, fulfills this uh, uh, behavior in which here what I see is that, so here I'm plotting momentum, and here I'm plotting time. So initially I uh, drive the, uh, the system into the Q equal pi mode, so this is eventually um, occupied, but photo, photons by this uh, engineered dissipative mechanism scatter into, uh, after some time uh, t, scatter into the Q equal zero mode, and it gets uh, macroscopically occupied. <coughs> and interestingly <coughs> enough, the rest of the modes, uh, the population of the rest of the modes are va is vanishingly small. And therefore, one can actually consider that this uh, whole cavity array uh, case uh, can be uh, actually mapped into the uh, two cavity array uh, case uh, with uh, only two equations of motion, 
for the uh, anti-symmetric and symmetric superposition. Can I ask you, is that really, are you just creating a, a dark state with Q equals zero and then pumping into it? I don't pump into it. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I mean, you're driving all the cavities and only the Q equals zero state is not re-excited. Yeah, so I uh, drive the anti-symmetric mode and then the dissipation takes me into this uh, zero momentum dark state. Right, so, so any of the non-zero Q modes are, are pumped, are driven into the zero mode. Precisely. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. if I if I could drive here, I could go here, so and I actually can choose the dissipation mechanism uh, to uh, have the steady state at the momentum that I want. Right. So here I'm just showing the specific example in which they are uh, driven to zero momentum. But I could yeah, create a, a pi condensate or sure. whatever I want. Okay. So that sounds just like dark state cooling. I mean, just like laser cooling. Is that? It's um, it's sort of uh, laser cooling, but I will tell you about some uh, uh, differences with the laser okay. cooling in the, in the next uh, slide. So uh, once again, what is the physics? Uh, one can actually solve uh, this uh, cavity array under a better approximation, uh, namely a uh, Hartree-Fock approximation. And uh, the physics here, I'm plotting the uh, mode occupation as a function of momentum and as a function of the uh, cavity drive and on the Q equal pi mode. <clears throat> so for a small drivings, uh, basically uh, I don't see this phenomenon of condensation into the zero momentum mode. And as I increase the drive, there is uh, some critical value in which uh, photons start to condense uh, around this uh, Q equal zero with, uh, with a specific uh, width, uh, which uh, in the steady state uh, takes uh, this uh, Lorentzian form. And this Lorentzian form already tells us that the system is not thermal. So this is different from a, a BEC distribution. So it's a non-thermal state. But however, it's similar to a thermal distribution. And one could uh, choose to um, basically uh, fit this Lorentzian with a Bose-Einstein distribution in such a way that one can actually uh, define an effective temperature and chemical potential in the in this system. And when one performs this fitting, one obtains and that the effective tem temperature and chemical potential are precisely given by uh, these uh, drivings and parameters that I have considered here. And therefore, this would be a way to uh, actually engineer uh, quasi-thermal systems. So this answers the question uh, uh, about what is the role of the chemical potential in these systems uh, that uh, was not really clear before. So the chemical potential in the system is given by uh, sort of this uh, Parameters here, which uh, eventually uh, depend on these cavity drivings. What determines the width? So the width, basically, um, C. So the width is given by this correlation net, which in the end depends. It's a combination of. It's an analytic function, so it's and it's a combination of uh, different parameters. Uh, it depends on gammas, omegas. Kind of exactly. So Q is the momentum of, of the mode along the array. Well, can you say what does the dispersion relation look like as a function of Q? Um, so the dispersion relation um, cosine. It, it is a cosine. It's a cosine. Yeah. Okay, so cosine. you're, you're really just pumping the from the zone edges and it's decaying to the middle. Yeah. And, and does it have a width in Q? Or is that what you just plotted? Oh, it's right there. Oh, this, yeah. is the, this is the <coughs> right, right. end of okay. Q. Yeah. Okay. okay. But the dispersion relation is in the cosine. Right. Okay. It's just a type binding mode. Yes, okay. So would you say again, in which sense this resembles a thermal state? So in the sense that I can, uh, I can, I can define an effective temperature and chemical potential in the system, and I can uh, always sort of, uh, you know, fit this distribution with a Bose-Einstein. I know it's a little bit artificial, but one could, you know, sort of, uh, you are just simulating something that behaves with an effective temperature and chemical potential. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, given, given a distribution, you extract what your effective temperature and chemical potential in your system is, and therefore uh, simulate some quasi-thermal system. That's the whole idea. Can I just ask what was the pick on the, the pipe? 
just the yeah, this is because I'm driving. driving. So the physics <coughs> here is that I'm driving at qubit by, and photons get scattered in a steady state into the, around the zero momentum. But it never goes to zero, right? Really. The switch yeah. out of the biggest part. Yeah, it goes to zero. Here no, I mean the, the, the occupancy of the pi state. Well, it, it does not go to zero because I'm driving continuously. So this is this is the, the intensity. This gives the this is given by the intensity of this drive. Of this drive. <coughs> so we have also uh, solved numerically uh, this problem, which uh, we could do up to uh, four cavities, and um, this is the result here. And it's uh, uh, the characteristic uh, zero momentum uh, peak of a uh, Bose-Einstein condensate. And uh, this allows us to sort of uh, claim that this uh, resembles this uh, VEC photons. <coughs> so um, one can speculate what actually we have in this system if we actually have the physics of a laser or of a VEC. So I can tell you that we have um, similarities and dissimilarities with both. <coughs> so um, a bose einstein condensate is simply defined <coughs> by um, a macroscopic occupation of the zero momentum. And this we have here. Then a condensate, uh, typically, uh, in a condensate, typically uh, thermalization is achieved here. Instead, we don't have uh, thermalization. Then uh, one has, in a condensate, a spontaneous symmetry breaking. And one can check that in our system, actually, the phase uh, is uh, um, after, the, uh, after the phase transition, the phase takes a, a specific value, and therefore one uh, has this spontaneous, spontaneous symmetry breaking characteristic from condensation. Of diagonal long-range order, I haven't shown it specifically here, but we also have checked that there is of diagonal long-range order. A condensate is not driven, however, we drive the system, uh, and a um, condensate uh, is characterized by number conservation. And here we don't have a full number conservation, but uh, interestingly, the scattering process that uh, takes photons from the antisymmetric node into the symmetric superposition, this uh, conserves the number of uh, particles. So this, uh, this commutes with n, and therefore, in this sense, it would be similar to the Bose Einstein condensate. Instead, the lacing is characterized by having a coherent state. Here, we have checked that uh, the uh, uh, states that we uh, obtain uh, are, have G2s uh, much smaller than 1, in particular around uh, 0 0.5 for large uh, um, dissipation strengths. So there, in this sense, is different from a laser. Uh, it's, different, it's difficult to say what uh, monochromaticity characteristic from a laser is in this context, but uh, it's just that it should work at a, at a specific uh, frequency. So in this sense, we could say that our system is monochromatic. Phase locking is <coughs> uh, the fact that uh, uh, the phase uh, acquires a, a specific value after the transition, so in, in this sense it's similar to this spontaneous symmetry breaking. Um, the system is driven, as well as uh, in the laser, and uh, in the laser uh, the uh, particle number is not conserved, and here, uh, as I have uh, said, the particle number is conserved by the scattering process. The, um, the spontaneous symmetry breaking, the macroscopic phase, is that just the overall phase of the whole array relative to the drive? So that would be the phase of, the, of each of the modes. So <clears throat> what I have done is uh, to solve the equations of motion for both the amplitudes of the modes and the phases of the modes. Uh, and what you can see is that when you uh, acquire a macroscopic uh, superposition of the symmetric state, the phase of the uh, symmetric uh, mode acquires a, pa a particular value. So with this phase, I'm talking about the phase of the modes, of the cavity modes. Relative to the drive. Um, yes. And such that if you took two of these arrays and you weakly coupled them to each other, you'll get some Josephson-like thing with those two phases. I'm just trying to understand the sense in which you. It's actually a very good point. Maybe this happened. You could engineer uh, two of these arrays in such a way that you have. A Phase difference. Exactly. And, and maybe you have. Uh, uh, so I'm just trying to ask: Is it really a condensate? A that's photon current. In this, the You're right. Right. Like you would have some cosine sinusoidal dependence of the. I haven't checked <coughs> that. That looks very good. Yeah. Okay. So let me um, switch to my second part, <coughs> which is the uh, quantum simulation of uh, lattice case field theories with superconducting uh, qubits. 
So uh, why Gates field theories are important is because uh, nature is Gates invariant, specifically QED, QCD, and the standard model are uh, Gates invariant theories. And in our context, uh, what is important for us is that uh, there is indeed a lattice formulation of lattice uh, Gates field theories, specifically as it was shown by Kogut and Suskin in the in the 70s, uh, one can actually uh, come up with the most general Hamiltonian in the lattice that is gauge invariant. And this Hamiltonian has this form uh, that looks uh, sort of complicated, but uh, it contains uh, four terms. The first term is the electric energy of the system in the lattice. The second term uh, corresponds to the magnetic energy of the system. Notice that this term uh, only uh, will appear for uh, two or more dimensions, and here I will focus on 1D, so therefore I will not consider uh, this magnetic energy term. Then there is a kinetic energy in the lattice, which uh, in the lattice it looks uh, like a like a sort of a, a tight binding term, and then there is the mass term. So let me explain specifically uh, these uh, three terms, uh, how they arrive in a gauge invariant fashion. So first I will have to explain what gauge invariant uh, means. So um, to do that I will focus on the specific uh, case of U1 gauge invariant. And uh, gauge invariant uh, means that under a, a transformation of this type, uh, the Hamiltonian remains unchanged. And these uh, operators here uh, are the generators of the group which uh, commute with the Hamiltonian. But also, very importantly, uh, uh, gauge invariance, uh, to have gauge invariance, the physical states in our theory has to have to remain uh, unchanged by the generators of, of, the, of the group. So these two conditions are very important to have a gauge invariant theory. Specifically, uh, let's see how a gauge invariant acts on the kinetic energy shown before. So the kinetic energy has uh, this uh, hoping uh, uh, form in the lattice, so one has two types of uh, uh, symmetries in the system. Uh, the first type of symmetry that one can encounter uh, corresponds to a global symmetry in which the fields uh, change uh, with a global phase, so they acquire a global phase after the transformation, and one can easily see that if I uh, uh, perform this transformation in this kinetic term, uh, this kinetic energy remains unchanged. So this uh, form of the kinetic energy is invariant under global uh, symmetry transformations. However, uh, a gauge uh, symmetry or local symmetry uh, acts in this way in, uh, such that uh, the transformation has local uh, parameters in such a way that the fields uh, transform locally with this parameter alpha and now if you include uh, this uh, transformation here in this Hamiltonian, one can see that actually one picks up uh, a phase between uh, these two fields, which could be uh, e to the alpha j plus 1 minus alpha uh, j. So therefore, in general, this uh, Hamiltonian is not a gauge invariant, uh, and one has to uh, put some remedy to, to this uh, um, fact. So the remedy uh, comes from considering uh, a more general form for the kinetic energy, which actually uh, has some operator u in between, which uh, after these uh, gauge transformations uh, transforms in such a way that the phases uh, uh, cancel out and it remains uh, gauge invariant. So when I uh, impose this condition, I can see that uh, this u uh, fulfill an algebra uh, of this type that I will be using later. Specifically, when I also impose the second uh, condition uh, in this uh, uh, type of uh, Hamiltonian, uh, one can see that uh, one can write the generators of the group in, of, uh, in this form, where E are some general operators, and uh, Psi dagger Psi is the density, which in the continuum is nothing but, uh, but uh, this equation uh, here, which uh, interpreting uh, E as an electric field, is nothing but the Gauss law. You have to prove that those u exist, but you just write them explicitly later? So the use, I will write them explicitly. I will uh, show you a specific example of the use. 
I mean, in, in ordinary electrodynamics, U is the integral of, of A between the two sides. Perceptual. Exponential uh, integral. Yeah. So here I'm focusing on the discrete, and QED is continuous, but this is it. Um, so within the gates uh, invariance, uh, there can be two types, uh, a static gates invariance. Uh, what it means is that uh, when I hop from side to side, I have to also pick a phase uh, in such a way that uh, you know the Hamiltonian remains gets invariant, but this phase is a C number, and this uh, types of uh, this type of gauge invariance has been considered in a number of papers very, uh, recently, uh, both with atoms as well as uh, some uh, proposals with superconducting qubits. Uh, but what we are interested in here is uh, the scenario of uh, dynamical gauge fields in which, uh, um, when I hop from side to side, actually. Um, uh, this hopping is assisted by an operator um, which uh, has internal degrees of freedom so in QED it could be uh, uh, the corresponding gates boson which is the photon in QCD uh, uh, so in, in, uh, in the uh, weak interaction it would be the W and uh, Z uh, bosons of the theory etc. So this is the scenario in which I am uh, interested in there have been some ideas on how to do this with uh, atomic systems, I will tell you here how to do it with superconducting qubits. So as I said before, the U's uh, have to fulfill these commutation relations with the generators of the group. And if I look uh, closely at these uh, relations, one can see that if U takes the form of a spin operator, this uh, precisely uh, is fulfilled. So this uh, G is uh, in this uh, uh, spin language would be the, uh, something like sigma z and this u would be uh, sigma plus and then I would have something like sigma z sigma plus equals sigma uh, plus which is uh, present for us and this uh, representation uh, of uh, having u as a spin is uh, so called quantum link models in the literature and this is the one that I will be using here because it's very easy to uh, quantum simulate uh, uh, spins in, uh, in a lattice so the other, in contrast, the other uh, uh, representation uh, so some people call it the Swinger representation in which u is just the exponential of the uh, integral of a uh, is more dif would be more dif difficult to quantum simulate. So then the kinetic energy that I uh, want to uh, consider um, takes this form uh, in which I have a fermionic field or bosonic depends on the quantum field theory that I want to simulate then the assisted hoping is uh, mediated by a spin operator, and then I go to uh, side S plus, S plus 1. This is just the spin of your fermion. Okay. So the psi is, the, is a fermion, and this would be a, a spin of uh, some, yeah, some spin, a spin system that links fermions on both sides. <coughs> the spin of the fermion? No, this is the, I have to. This has to be a totally independent system. So it, it has to be, for example, a fermion with an independent spin. This is not the spin. No. So. <coughs> so it's a. It's a it, you introduce and you try to understand if you are you introducing another particle that can also hop and is a, 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 a particle that has spin. And hops from side to side. So in, in, in QED, uh, one would uh, intuitively understand it that when you destroy a particle here and create it here, this process is uh, assisted by a photon. So a photon uh, destroys it here right. and creates it here. Right. So this is the way to think about this. But this is now this is not a boson anymore. This is now a fermion. Mm, now, now this is a spin. It's a spin. It's a spin. It's a spin. It's a spin. There is this lives, representation lives, in which instead of bosons okay, you use it. It lives on the links, exactly. but it has no d dynamic, it doesn't move. It doesn't move. It's, you have, it and a, each link has its own Precisely. spin. Okay. <coughs> Good. So I will uh, give here a, uh, one of the simplest examples, which is known as uh, the Swinger model, which is a uh, um, QED. Uh, in one plus one dimensions, and here I will consider the discrete version, so the lattice version of the Swinger model. So one knows that uh, in 1D these fermions can be actually represented by a spin uh, degrees of freedom, and in, in this case, 
the uh, kinetic energy then takes this form in which I uh, excite uh, uh, spin at side A, the excited at side A plus 1, assisted by a uh, spin uh, transition uh, in on the link. And the generators of uh, the group have uh, simply this form. In addition, the Swingler model considers also uh, the mass term, which in this language is uh, uh, straightforward, is uh, simply uh, uh, psi uh, set, which comes from uh, psi dagger psi, so uh, this uh, is trivial. And in, again, in this language, the electric energy, um, uh, it's, uh, it comes from the generator of, uh, of the group, which uh, takes uh, the form of uh, S set squared. So this is the Swinger model that I will consider. And this model is uh, very interesting because depending on the ratio on the, uh, between delta and uh, G, one will find a different phase in the system. So now I have this model in which I have a spins living on a 1D lattice. And uh, these uh, spin excitations are assisted by uh, uh, some link degrees of freedom <coughs> that are implemented by uh, the spin. So your, your spin that's uh, mediating the interaction isn't necessarily uh, one half part, spin one half, is it? No, it can be general spin. So here I will show uh, in particular the, the case of spin one. Because if you put here a spin one half, yeah. you see that uh, you know a spin plus minus one half have the same energy, and actually this uh, has no interest in physics. The first non-trivial case comes when I have uh, m set equal to uh, plus minus one or zero, and in such a case one can actually have, depending on the value of uh, s, the set component, and uh, this. Uh, master, one will find a different place. I will try to show this. Okay, so um, let me tell you why this is interesting. What is this uh, actually uh, simulating? So uh, in QCD there is this process called uh, stream breaking in which uh, one knows that uh, if one has a, a quark and anti-quark pair the, separated by a certain distance L, the energy of the system is proportional to L, so it grows linearly with L. So as I separate uh, this uh, quark and anti-quark, the energy of the system starts to grow, and at some point I, I put them farther and farther away, it's uh, energetically uh, infarable because I have so much energy in the system, and it becomes more farable uh, to actually uh, create uh, a quark-anti-quark -quark pair in the system uh, which are called mesons, and therefore, as I uh, increase the uh, distance between a quark and anti-quark, I have a phase transition, uh, which is this uh, string-breaking transition. So this is the, uh, precisely the transition that I will try to simulate with a superconducting version of, uh, of this system. So let me uh, come back to the, to the model and explain the physics of this uh, string-breaking in the context of this uh, simple uh, spin model. So I have three terms in the Hamiltonian. Uh, let me consider a small, uh, a small J couplings. So uh, depending, on, as I said, uh, on this uh, dominating uh, uh, energy scales, uh, if uh, I, ha I will have two phases, the string phase and the meson phase. If delta um, is uh, is the largest energy scale in the problem because uh, delta uh, enters the meson phase as I will explain uh, now I will be in the string phase instead if delta uh, is uh, small I will be in the meson phase so this uh, string uh, is uh, represented by uh, a quark, anti-quark, quark, anti-quark, quark, anti-quark anti uh, which are linked uh, by a flux line so in my context, a flux line means having S set equal to 1. So that's why this is the uh, simplest non-trivial case. This uh, string phase uh, in this uh, context of spins could be having this uh, antiferromagnetic order. And here, importantly, I want to uh, fix the links, uh, sorry, the ends, in such a way that the two possible ground states are either the string of the, or the meson, because otherwise it could be just the, uh, the vacuum in which uh, uh, I have S set equal to zero and all the spins pointing down. So if I fix the ends, let's say up and down, 
uh, uh, this, uh, the energy <coughs> of this system, I can calculate it uh, according to this Hamiltonian, and uh, one can see that uh, it scales with G, uh, G is the energy of each uh, of these uh, uh, links, times L minus one sides here, so it scales in this way, instead the, instead the meson has a, a, a zero uh, value of the uh, S component in the Hamiltonian, so it would be uh, zeros here, one and one here because I have fixed the ends, and then this uh, sort of ferromagnetic order here, so it, one can show that the energy of this uh, phase uh, goes like 2G plus delta. So one can clearly see that depending on the uh, value of uh, uh, delta over uh, G, one will encounter a different phase in the system. So, so uh, the energy is coming from the electric current is that where it's coming? Yes, so I'm, I'm just um, performing a straight counting here. So as you can see, uh, one would have uh, a spin one here, so one, two, three, four, number of sides min minus one, and here one would have uh, two G coming from the ends uh, plus uh, two delta. So, so it looks like your Hamiltonian is in the z basis. Um, what do you mean? Well, I don't see any x or y. <laughs> That's what I mean. It, it looks like it's a Hamiltonian to me from the, that the point point of view. So here I have discussed the physics, assuming this uh, term to, uh, to be very, very small. And now I will tune it. But that's also hoping. So when this is zero, strictly uh, zero, uh, there is a crossing, and then uh, this opens actually a, uh, an anti-crossing in the spectrum, as I will show in the next slide. So the the mass term is just showing up for each one of the mass, uh, mm -hmm. the, the insights, or does it <coughs> depend on how many things are in the middle, like the length of the string. So for the, the meson case, yeah. does it depend on the length of the string at all, or is it always just two delta? Uh, it's two delta because uh, one only has uh, a quark anti quark pair. Okay. So you pick up one from each one of the quarks? Uh, you pick up effectively. So if you compute it because it's uh, this sort of. Uh, so now you ask if this. Yeah, this, is, this turns out to be independent of the one. Ah, no, excuse me. This is actually. I think it scales with the number of sides. Because I don't know, because you have ferromagnetic order, so this means that this part cancels this part, and then there is a price to pay. It's always two delta because you can sort of see it in, in a way that what is the price to pay uh, to have this sort of uh, interaction here? It's okay. So. Um, the point that I want to make is that uh, if I fix the ends, if I, uh, uh, let's say, uh, fix this spin to be down and this spin to be up, uh, depending on the number, uh, on the uh, ratio between delta and g, one can uh, find a string phase or a meson phase. So, so, so I want to ask a question. So the case of uh, minus one for SC is the same energy, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so it's not short time. Okay, I, I am just considering the, the case in which you, know, you sort of spontaneously go to the MSC one. You could you could do the same thing for um, but then or if you if you want to break the symmetry, you can add in the model uh, a term which goes with the uh, SZ, so a magnetic field term, and then you you don't run into this problem. Good. So um, when delta over G is uh, small. There is another parameter that characterizes uh, my transition, which is precisely the set component of the link. So if I measure here, if I measure what is the spin component of this uh, link operator, and if I measure zero, I will be in the meson phase. Instead, if I measure uh, one, uh, I will be in the string phase. And the, the critical value is given by uh, this uh, uh, expression here. And so this should be short for j equal to zero, and as j uh, is uh, uh, finite, this should be smoother and smoother. So 
to implement uh, this system with uh, superconducting qubits, I will use uh, what is called the Swinger representation, in which um, uh, my uh, spin operators uh, can be mapped into uh, Swinger bosons. So there is an exact mapping uh, in which if I uh, substitute S by uh, two bosons, a, a uh, dagger P and a set by this combination here, the commutation relations are uh, preserved. And uh, therefore, this is a, another uh, way to represent this uh, spin on the link. Uh, so what I will do, because it's much easier to uh, do it with circuit QED, is to actually have uh, uh, some qubits here linked by uh, some uh, harmonic oscillators. So the model that I want to consider consists on the following, which I have a set of uh, um, superconducting qubits and a set of cavities that uh, are link uh, neighboring qubits. Then I, I consider a coupling between uh, qubits and uh, resonators of the form of a James Cummings type. And then I have to include uh, some non-linearities in the system. So uh, I have to include uh, uh, self non-linearities on site, <coughs> n squared, as well as a, a cross non-linearity in the system, n, n, a, n, b. And one can show <coughs> that if one starts with this model here, which uh, can be implemented uh, very easily with uh, circuit QED, if one performs second order perturbation theory uh, with a perturbative parameter delta over u, so I want u here to be the largest energy scale of, of the problem, one ends up to second order uh, precisely with this uh, model, uh, this Swinger model, which is the one that I want to simulate. And this is the, the mapping between uh, this model here and this model. So this is the physical implementation that I want to consider. I will have qubits on a lattice, which are linked by uh, an harmonic oscillators, uh, which are also mutually coupled. So this is very easily uh, achieved in uh, circuit QED. Uh, and the architecture is uh, specifically shown here for uh, one link here. So let me uh, give you the physics of uh, uh, one uh, link. And as I said, uh, photons in this system uh, actually decay. So I will consider the uh, general scenario in which uh, the photons from the cavity uh, decay, so they open uh, quantum system uh, dynamics, as well as the fact that uh, the qubits can decay. And uh, as I said, for finite J, the spectrum uh, opens uh, an anti-crossing uh, as a function of delta. And so this transition, so one has for a small delta uh, this meson phase. And as one uh, tunes uh, over delta, one uh, goes to this uh, string phase here. Um, so I want to uh, achieve this transition. But uh, so what one can say is just, uh, you know, you should adiabatically uh, run uh, on delta, and then you will go from the meson to the, uh, the string phase. But <clears throat> um, if I go too slow, notice that photons and the qubits can decay out of the system. So to achieve the transition in the open quantum system scenario, there will be an optimal velocity of ramping uh, with delta, such that um, I uh, go from the meson phase to the string phase. And the question is, uh, how well can I do that? And these are, this is, these are the results for um, uh, realistic parameters of uh, the uh, qubit couplings uh, and decays. And um, what I can see is that this optimal velocity, uh, uh, at the point of the optimal velocity, the uh, fidelity of the transfer between the meson and the string phase exceeds 95% uh, for this uh, uh, even not optimized uh, and realistic parameters. So this brings me to my conclusions. And uh, what I have shown is two examples of uh, quantum simulations uh, for open quantum systems with photons. I have shown how to simulate uh, phase transitions, thermalization th phenomena, and lattice gauge field theories with photons. So in the first part, I have shown how to engineer dissipation and achieve the pho uh, photon condensate with uh, superconducting qubits. And in the second part, I have shown uh, how to uh, study the stream breaking phenomenon in a, a QCD with superconducting uh, qubits. So thank you. Well, we can thank for a
couple of questions. So I don't know if I'm missing something, or is this the Hamiltonian that you have is related to this? Is diagonal on the z basis, right? Is no, the one in the midpoint? So you have both terms. That's mm -hmm. yes. kinetic energy. Uh, isn't that, you know, hopping into plus minus on the z basis also? No, so this this is like sigma y, so it's y. So uh, are you talking about uh, I'm talking about the whole, the whole thing, all, you know. So the spins on the sides and the spins on the legs. So, so this the is minus really, is just... This is really not diagonal. Sorry? It's not diagonal. No, it's on the z It's not diagonal. When you uh, perform the eigenstates of this Hamiltonian, you basically get combinations. So the mass term and the electric energy term are obviously on the z basis. So the kinetic energy is not as I said, it uh, depends on where you are. Uh, so if you are uh, here, you can see that it's precisely non-diagonal. You would have uh, the symmetric superposition between, let's say, this state here, uh, so up spin here, down spin here, uh, this uh, representing a, a, um, s equal to 0. And if you are here, you are close to, the, to being diagonal, let's say. So it depends on, yeah. Let's see. Um. It's sort of hard to take all that in. Is the meson, how, can you describe what the meson would be physically in terms of excitations in, in your model yes. with supernatural qubits? Um, so in the, so the, you know, it's, it's excitation now, uh, so psi is mapped to sigma minus. So if I have, let's say, if I, if I, if I have an antiquark, uh, I would have sigma minus, so uh, destroy an excitation. If I have instead a sigma dagger, which uh, creates a, a quark, uh, I would have a sigma plus here, so uh, I create an excitation. And then the spin, um, the spin can be uh, zero or one. So, uh, so the string is uh, a model in which I have quark, anti-quark, quark, anti-quark, quark, anti-quark, anti anti joined by an electric flux. So what this means is, um, forget about the ends, what it means is that I have uh, one here and then anti-ferromagnetic orbit. I actually mean in the, in the superconducting qubit implementation, what, what, would be, what would you actually have? What, what would be the meson, the quark-anti-quark -quark pair? Okay, in, so in the actual superconducting qubits and resonators. Yeah. So the, um, the quark and the quark pair is characterized by um, um, a zero flux in between, which would mean s equal to zero, and you have to translate. Uh, so you have to translate this s state, uh, so s set equal to zero, to this language. So you have to see uh, what uh, which state actually implements this equal to zero. Specifically, if I, if I have an excitation on B and an excitation on A, uh, so if NA is equal to MB, this is equal to zero. So that would be the meson phase. Oh. When both uh, photon numbers are the same, I am in the second, in the, in the uh, meson phase. When there is an imbalance between photon, okay. so all I have to measure is the imbalance between uh, photons on both cavities. So both being the same would be meson, both being different would be uh, the same. Okay. Uh, and I think we should uh, delay the discussions for the, for the discussion section. We'll move on with the scale. So let's, let's find our speaker.